Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are doing some mobile work. I don't do a lot of it. Um, most of it is just for a transmission shop. We are programming a Subaru that they just put a transmission in. Um, this has a five-speed auto. It's not the CVT. Um, they said it has a harsh shift from second to third. The transmission supplier says they need to make sure that the calibration is up to date. And then I'm also gonna see if there's a quick learn available. Now for this, I am going to, uh, this will be a better test than the last video. I'm gonna test out the Mongoose Subaru cable from Opus. So we'll use that with SSM3 and Subaru Flashrite. So first we'll use Flashrite, make sure that the calibration is up to date. And then we'll jump into SSM3 and see if there is a quick learn. So I've already prepared the vehicle by connecting a battery maintainer to the battery. I have it set to 13.9. I can't remember what the Subaru spec is. That may be too high. Um, if so, it is adjustable so I can turn it down. But let's go ahead and get the mongoose cable hooked up. We'll fire up the software. We'll check the current calibration and see if there's an update. Um, I did actually, we'll probably go into SSM3 first because I noticed the check engine light was on. Let's just see what fault codes we have before we jump into a reflash. Now, as I'm waiting for my laptop to boot up, I am suspecting that we have a transmission fault because the, the sport motor S light is flashing on the odometer. Now in the last video, we already used the Mongoose cable, so we don't have to use the Opus configuration app. We already have that set up. We'll open up select monitor three. We have the DSTI selected at the top. That's what we want. We're gonna go to all other models. Each system check. I don't want to wait for a full code scan. We'll go to engine. We'll wait for it to identify the engine that's in this vehicle. We'll check it for codes and then we'll jump over to the transmission control module. Check that one for codes. Because if there's a hard fault for a circuit, then programming is not going to fix that more than likely. Let's go to diagnostic code display, temporary, no codes present, memorized. So we have a history code for an O2 sensor heater. They probably had the exhaust down when they were working on the. Uh, transmission. So that's probably what that fault code is from. We don't want to clear that yet. Let's exit, Let's go back. We're going to go to transmission control. And this is a legacy GT. It does have the dual overhead cam turbocharged motor in it. So it does have the electronic five speed transmission. Let's see what codes we have here. No current codes. Memorize codes, no codes. Okay, so that's good news because we may not actually have a hard fault. Let's go back. Um, and I, I do see that we have transmission learning and some other options in here, but let's go back. Actually, we're just gonna exit out of here. We need flash right too. So I could have checked <laughs> or should have checked what calibration was in the transmission and engine modules while we were uh, Connected. Well, let's go 2009 legacy 2.5 turbocharged. Go search. And if you notice, I didn't select what module I wanted to program because I wanted to see if we had ECM and TCM calibrations. So there's an ECM calibration if it has a manual transmission. So that does not apply to this vehicle. We have a TCM calibration update, AT, AT. Now, I don't know what our current calibration is, so we may already have this installed, but various automatic transmission codes, improved judgment for oil pressure switch, shift shock second to third and third to second, which is what their complaint is. Their complaint is a harsh shift from second to third. So it's very likely that we have a valid calibration here. So it gives us some additional information, the part number, the connector, if we need a jump or a connector while programming, which there's none, decryption keyword, which we're gonna need here in a little bit, and our new calibration ID. Now, if this isn't a valid calibration for this vehicle, say I selected the wrong vehicle, it's fine, it's not gonna let me continue. So ensure that the screensaver is disabled, all of the programs are closed. Yep, yep. We're gonna use a generic scan tool, pass through. We're gonna pick the mongoose. So we have the mongoose plus for Subaru. Next, we have the ignition switch on. I'm actually, I had my foot on the brake. 
some vehicles they don't want that so i release the brake pedal we'll hit next yep device is connected decryption keyword oh normally there we go so this has to be in all caps 4101 795 f <laughs> it helps if you type it all next so it says what our current calibration number is and what the new oh let's see this ecu is suitable for programming okay i i thought we were talking about engine here um current calibration number or current part number is that the new part number is this so i think we should be good it gives us the option to execute just snapping a picture showing that we are indeed updating this to include in the customer invoice. Checking security. I do have the maintainer on. It was apparently happy with the voltage. And now we wait. Okay, programming is complete. Let's turn the ignition switch off. Next, ignition switch on. Next, clearing the memory. Now there may be additional steps we have to take. We still need to clear that engine code that's in history to get rid of the flashing lights, uh, which this process may do it for us. And then we'll have to go into transmission. We'll probably, uh, we may want to reference service information on what we're supposed to do when we replace the transmission, but we're probably gonna have to clear the adaptives. I don't know if programming it will clear it for us. That may be what this process is right now, but we'll probably wanna clear them and then we'll have to do a learn process, which the transmission will probably have to be warmed up. So we'll unhook all of our equipment, go for a drive, warm it up. And then if there's a quick learn process we can do, then we'll do that afterwards. Programming is complete. We can turn the ignition switch off, press finish. So back in the SSM3 software, we're gonna go to all of their model, each system check, engine control, we're gonna clear codes. Um, while that's communicating, so the engine light came right back on. Let's see if it's that same O2 sensor. They may not have it plugged in. Now, being that this is turbocharged, it, it's got a downpipe. The sensor shouldn't be anywhere near the axle. Um, so I don't know if I can even see the connector from the engine bay, you know, without getting the vehicle up in the air. So I may peek underneath, see if it's uh, clear of the exhaust. If it is unplugged, make sure we don't melt anything. Um, if I can reach it, I'll plug it in. Yeah, that code came right back. Okay, so let's uh, have a hard time getting the internet here. So we're going to look up for transmission, R&R. &R. Transmission installation. We'll go to the end of this article, see if it tells us to do anything special for the learn procedure. So when we are done, we need to perform the clear memory to operation and execute the learning control promotion. Sounds kind of weird, but okay. Let's go back. Um, it doesn't tell us to warm it up. The scan tool may tell us that it needs to be a certain temperature. So we will uh, we'll find out here in a second. Five-speed transmission. So we have clear memory two. <laughs> I wish I knew what we were clearing. What is clear memory number one? Key back on, go back into transmission control. So AT related learning and inspection mode, AT learning mode. It doesn't tell us to have it running. Warm up the engine until 140 degrees. So uh, we're gonna have to warm it up for a little bit. Of course, it's on empty. Um, we should, should have enough fuel, but maybe not enough to go on a good drive. I'm just gonna peek underneath, make sure that there's no uh, O2 sensor wire dangling where it's gonna burn on the exhaust and then uh, We'll let this warm up for a little bit. We're gonna see if we can uh, speed this up a little bit. Go for a test drive. The 
this thing does not have a happy turbo. I need it to warm up, but at the same time, I can't drive it hard because the turbo is not, not happy. Um, it's pretty noisy. I'm kind of worried that the turbo is going to come apart. The turbo has been off of it recently. There's a new gasket underneath it. I can see anti-seize on the bolts. I don't know if the tra transmission shop had it out. Uh, I don't think that they would need it out to do the transmission. The car has a temporary tag on it, so it's really hard to say what happened in the past. Unfortunately, this transmission doesn't want to warm up. Um, now, it is also cold outside. It's probably 25 degrees, um, so we might be better off idling until it warms up. Especially if the vehicle has a stuck thermostat, which it shouldn't, the temp gauge is about half. Um, essentially, we have to warm the radiator up and the transmission up. But as we drive it, the radiator is going to cool down and it's going to cool down that transmission. I don't think these have a thermostat built in. So the transmission is going to cool off with the radiator. So we'll play the long game, wait for it to warm up, and then we'll uh, once it's up to 140, we'll come back and we'll do that quick learn. Okay, so it says to lift the vehicle up and put on the parking brake. I think this is a safety precaution. Um, I think it just doesn't want it to take off because it's going to apply different gears while we're sitting here. Um, I just put the parking brake on. I used to lift them up. I, I don't anymore. Turn off the ignition switch. Okay, so we set fault codes. Let's uh, let's go to our diagnostic codes. So we have a communication fault. Um, let's just clear it. It was probably my doing. We'll leave the key off for a second, let it restart. Transmission control. Once it initializes communication, we'll go back to our AT learning. And now that we're warmed up, we shouldn't have an issue. If for some reason we do have an issue, I did bring the SDI, but I don't think we'll need it. So the shop is closed right now. Um, I don't have access to their tools to lift this thing up in the air or put it on jack stands. Um, I've done the CVTs on the ground, so I'm just gonna go ahead and try and complete this one as is, um, it may or may not complete depending on what it asks of us. Most of the ones I've done have been CVT and they're you know pretty simple. But if it tries to do any like all wheel drive learning, it's going to uh, freak out a little bit because uh, all the wheels are gonna spin the same and that's not what it wants. It wants to try and you know lock up that all wheel drive clutch in order to find out where the learn point is on that. See, I'm used to the CVT ones that I don't think you have to release the brake pedal. So if your parking brake doesn't work, you, uh, you'll you have some issues. And maybe this isn't going to complete because, yeah. So I think we'll wrap it up here. The other shop's going to have to complete the quick learn. Um, if they can't, then they'll have to call me back once they have you know, some of the other issues fixed then they have it warmed up, ready to go on a rack. I'll come back, perform the quick learn. But I think they'll be fine. I, it probably completed the one for the primary clutches. It just did not complete the quick learn on the all-wheel drive clutch. That should learn on its own or adapt, adapt over time. So it's not a big deal. If you guys have any questions or comments, put those down below. In the description of the video, I'm going to put a link to the Mongoose cable. This is the Subaru Mongoose cable. They are specific. They make a bunch of different ones depending on what vehicle you're working on. It does not come with software. The SSM3 software that I'm using does not come with the cable. That's an additional package that you have to buy from a different company. So you buy the Subaru SSM4 package and it comes with SSM4, Flashrite, and SSM3. But you can't buy the, uh, the Denso DSTi interface. You can only buy the new interface which is not backwards compatible with SSM3. So if you've bought the Subaru software recently, 
and you want to add the functionality of SSM3, then this is a, an affordable way of doing that. You know, you don't have to spend $2,000 or more on a Subaru SDI or a Denso DSTI on eBay, not knowing if it's going to work or not. You can, you know, spend five or 600 bucks for one of these guys and unlock SSM3 capabilities if you already have the software. Now, if you're just reprogramming and you're not using the diagnostic software, this will work for that as well. And you can buy Subaru FlashWrite discs from, uh, there's a couple companies in the US. You don't buy it from Subaru. You have to buy a disc on, online. You have to call them up, order the disc, they mail it to you, and they're released quarterly. And it's less than 100 bucks typically, probably around 100 with shipping. I have a new disc on the way. I probably should have waited a couple months because I think the next quarter starts in April, uh, but they may not have the discs until May anyways. So it's not that big of a deal for me to get the one coming. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, other programming videos, diagnostic repair, key stuff, subscribe, click the bell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.